Office of Hawaiian Affairs has come into existence, and there is much work ahead of us. Let us unite and get it done. Let us succeed in the task set before us. Long live the Hawaiian people. Long live Hawaii. And malama ka'aina. We need your prayers. We need your continuing support so the baby may grow. We need your love, most of all. The 30s, 40s, 50s were dark times. I mean, these were the times when people were forbidden to speak their language, when assimilation was a very important part of the culture. But it doesn't mean that Hawaiians weren't active. In the 50s and the 60s, the only vehicle Hawaiians had to express themselves as Hawaiian was the Hawaiian Civic Club. I remember my dad, when I was growing up, hauling me off to the civic club meetings in Waimea so they could talk about how bad Hawaiian homes were handling the, the situation up there. The 1970s saw a revival of Hawaiian interests in controlling their own destiny. There was a group called the Hawaiians, and they focused on Hawaiian homes specifically. Why this is important was that they linked up with a gentleman called Sonny Kanihu, who is an outstanding hero of the Hawaiian movement. Sonny's been waiting this turn in line. Sonny's been waiting. Sonny's gonna wait until he dies. How would you work it out and tell me? What would you do? How much would you take? If it were you, I don't wanna fight, I don't wanna fight, I don't wanna die, I don't wanna die, I don't wanna live with all the lies. Sun has been waiting. Why should he wait until he dies? The second protest was Hilo Airport. The state had been using Hawaiian homeland without compensation. From that beginning, there were other groups that started up. I remember Alan Ho and a number of other people who were legislative aides, calling those of us that were in the community, in active, kind of active in the Hawaiian movement, to come up to the legislature and help Chief Justice Richardson lobby whoever we knew there for the passage of the um, University of Hawaii Law School. We went there and we did this, and this was in like the early 70s, and all of a sudden they, the legislature funded it and it's founded. Chief Justice has his dream is going to have a place to train Hawaiian lawyers. Even if there were only six of us at the law school, seven when Melody came in, you know, it had this Hawaiian tinge to it because the Chief Justice meant it so. And the Chief Justice was also sending out these decisions that recognized Hawaiian usage and custom and, and the like. I clerked for CJ after I completed law school. And during that period, something rather amazing happened, and that was the landing on Koholawe. It really was a step towards self-determination on a native Hawaiian government. Koholawe is synonymous to Aloha Aina. We love the land. And if all us Hawaiians can go over there and touch it, we all come together. The problems are very, very critical. And we want people to look at it because, you know, kama aina means the child of the land and every one of you that have that Hawaiian blood in you is a child of this land. And you are attached to it whether you like it or not. <laughs> you know, and you have that blood running through your veins. The Dick and Jane book's not going to make you proud of what you are. And Kahawalawi is going to. That's what we intend to do.
I grew up in a period of time where Native Hawaiians was in, in it wasn't a glamorous or any kind of uh, positive thing. When it became an issue of justice for people, this is where the politics began. And the Kaho'olawe movement grew out of that lack of justice, lack of protection for cultural resources, and the care and the stewardship of the land. 1975 was the year that I arrived home after uh, some 20 year absence. I, I get off the plane at Honolulu Airport and I see this poster of a double hull canoe. None of that, those images existed uh, when I grew up. So I went from not knowing much about the culture, being immersed in a tremendous period of cultural revival and, uh, and, and the beginning of a huge renaissance. Through the Kaolave movement, there arose this new political consciousness on the part of Hawaiians. Lots of tension in the air, tension between the general Hawaiian community and the rest of Hawaii. As we were beginning to understand our history, to know that we had something to contribute, and especially to come to the realization that for many years we had been essentially irrelevant. So all of this is happening between 1970 and 1976, 1977, and all of a sudden the state of Hawaii decides that uh, they're going to have a constitutional convention. And they're going to take the opportunity to rewrite the Hawaii state constitution. And for many of us, we looked up and we said, maybe we should rewrite it in a way that recognized Hawaiian rights, Hawaiian entitlements, and even the quest for Hawaiian self-governance. Puvalu were meetings of all the representatives of Hawaiian organizations throughout the state to discuss issues and solutions. The Ahakau Kanavai was an elected group of representatives from the Puvalu meetings who then put together recommendations that would go to the 1978 Constitution Convention. One of those recommendations was the formation of the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Anti Frenchy ran and became a member, and I did. We got her appointed chairman of the Hawaiian Affairs Committee. She gathered together a lot of the young Hawaiian activists. She brought into her committee as staff members, and then she invited all the various Hawaiian organizations and movements to come in and to present how they saw their piece of the Hawaiian movement. We dealt with the entire spectrum of issues. The issue that remained was the restoration of self-governance. The idea was we would start with a Hawaiian election, establish a Hawaiian entity. It really was a step towards self-determination on a native Hawaiian government. And that's how people at KonKon saw it. Like, this is the first step that we can take. They were looking, first of all, at the public land trust, the ceded lands, and the idea in our State Admissions Act that basically says those lands are held for the benefit of you know, five trust purposes, including the betterment of the conditions of native Hawaiians. And so that was an amazing idea that really a part of the revenue from those lands should go to the Native Hawaiian people. And the other part of it was that Native Hawaiians, in that largest sense of Native Hawaiians, would be able to elect people, trustees, who would direct those funds and who would specifically act on behalf of the Native Hawaiian people. But that it wasn't creating a state agency, it was really beginning the process of self-determination and creating a government for ourselves. I was told by my staff not to get emotional because some people frown on emotionalism. I just would like to close my remarks by telling you from the bottom of my heart that we have indeed done our homework and there will be people who will contest the constitutionality of anything we do here in the convention. I ask you with all humility and as a servant of the Hawaiian community
to pass this proposal, number 11, for the benefit of my people. Mahalo. Anti Frenchie passed every single one of the Hawaiian proposals out of her committee with a unanimous vote. She would say, we want kuka, kuka to we kukai. That means nobody leaves the table until there's a resolution. She was perhaps one of the best negotiators I have ever worked with. So those early years of turmoil and struggle and putting it together starts from that kind of a foundation. So the opportunity to to seek a leadership post through the Office of Hawaiian Affairs really appealed to me. I think we were all on the same page in terms of the long-term vision of someday hoping that we might be able to restore some kind of a Hawaiian nation, self-determination, sovereignty, not quite knowing how we would get there. Native Hawaiians at the congressional level and working with our congressional uh, uh, delegation it means we have to be smarter and a little tougher. The most important thing for us was resources. We needed resources. We had no operating money. The, uh, uh, the 20 percent the ceded land uh, uh, funding thing had not yet been done. Through our agency status and our ability to raise hard issues, to demand equity based on what the law says that should be given to us, we've been able to extract that repeatedly from the courts that have ruled in our favor. The momentum moving towards self-government, I think OHA was a, a strong part of that. Obviously, in 1993, on the 100th anniversary of the overthrow, that was really kind of this defining point where it seemed like just we were about to do it. Um, but it didn't quite take at that point. I think one of the things that happened is the issue of what kind of self-government we were talking about really came to the fore for the Native Hawaiian people. And in 1993, it became really clear that a segment of our community was not interested in federal recognition, that a vocal segment of our community really wanted independence. We are confronted now not only with the federal recognition, it's the many brands that have surfaced on what is considered Hawaiian Kingdom, or a form of sovereignty in Hawaii. And this is where I feel that we need to be able to reach out and build a more unified approach. When I came in in 1990, uh, the portfolio was worth 19 million. Through the efforts of the decisions of the Board of Trustees, when I left in 2002, the portfolio was just over 400 million. It was a profound growth, uh, done, done so primarily with settlements, but also with the good uh, advice that the trustees received over time from money managers uh, that uh, grew the portfolio even during tough times. And we generate revenues and we set a policy at our board level that a percentage will be used to give back to the community through grants and services. Annually we provide close to 14 million dollars that go and service our beneficiaries either through grant debt aid or directly with uh, in a program that we, we, we have currently as a Malama Loan program. Throughout the state of Hawaii, throughout the United States, and throughout the international community, Ahapuna Naleo and Navahio Kalaniopu have become the model schools of all Native Indigenous people who want to do what they did, which is recapture their language through education. OHA played a very important part in helping to foster the child's growth. OHA also has been instrumental in kind of supporting, financially supporting, really important Hawaiian organizations like the Native Hawaiian Eagle Corporation. OHA has provided the support that has allowed NHLC to represent Native Hawaiians from you know, land title cases, to water issues, to traditional customary rights, to even, you know, to bigger issues, Hawaiian homelands. We went to the university. We've given them monies to uh, continue the education for Hawaiians. And, and we continue to do that today. We fund all these charter schools, and we pretty much have picked up the slack where the, the state has not uh, funded. OHA now, with, with the kinds of funds we do have, 
we've been able to help our, our beneficiaries in, in many, many ways. I've been able to get a lot done on Hawaii Island with help from OHA through uh, Habitat for Humanity. Habitat has built 11 houses on the Kauai Homestead. One house in Waimea, two more are on the way. Five homes in 10 days at Laiopua 2020 at Kelakehe, another Hawaiian homestead. OHA deserves tremendous credit uh, for making that possible. 2012 uh, is when uh, the lands of Kaka'ako were uh, approved as settlement to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. The final uh, result is that the amounts of, of money due to the Office of Hawaiian Affairs has been settled. Real estate is our only resource that we can, uh, that we can generate income to support programs that would benefit Hawaiians. We got Kakaka 200 million, that land once fully developed is going to worth nearly a billion dollars. In the Gentry project, we're buying five acres with building on it. And here's a piece of property that's worth by tax assist valuation, $33 million. We bought it for 21. The criteria to buy heritage land is because we want to preserve something. Like uh, Kukani Loko is there, the birthing stones. So that only occupies about two acres, I think. And we bought 500 acres. That has economic opportunities. The ultimate goal, the ultimate day that we look forward to, is when we can transfer all OHA's assets to a sovereign Hawaiian entity. And not, not just our monetary assets now, but our trust assets, our land assets, and this whole amazing infrastructure that we've created to serve the beneficiaries with. And that is the day we look forward to, and that is what we strive for. In order to build a beloved nation, we have to educate, we have to share information about what the critical core issues are, and then how do we involve, how do we encourage our people to become active agents in the political process of change. A nation includes quality access to health care, good education that embraces the essence of being Hawaiian and nurturing cultural identity. It's about uh, taking care of, uh, of those in need who are impoverished, those who are homeless, and finding them adequate services uh, for rehabilitation, as well as the right to, to safe housing, and mostly the opportunity for social mobility. The Office of Hawaiian Affairs as an organization, we have evolved and grown from its inception in 1978 until the present, we have been given birth and life. We have crawled as an infant. We have even learned to walk as a child. Ikeya Manawa. And now it is time we learn to run as advocates for Kanaka Maoli and Native Hawaiian rights. Kukulu Ho is the strategy that directs OHA to rebuild, to reestablish, and to reaffirm that our rich heritage and culture will flourish for the next five generations. I continue to use it to guide us with a vision and a renewed drive to our purpose. By acting on this design to re-erect our inherent dignity as Kanaka Maoli, we move from a state agency and restore our integrity as a Hawaiian institution that embraces the loina, the traditions of our kupuna.